Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Today we have a very unusual car, a car that was manufactured literally five miles from my garage here in Van Nuys, California. Um, this is one of the wonders of the Peterson Museum. Uh, if you don't know the Peterson Museum, it's one of the great automotive museums of the world. And it's located in, uh, right in Los Angeles. And besides the stuff they always have on display, they always have cool stuff hidden in the basement. And this is one of those cars. This is a 1948 uh, Davis Devon. I hope I'm saying it correctly. It is a three-wheel car. It was one of those cars that was built uh, post-war, right after World War II. Everybody was anxious for cars, and there were a lot of innovative car manufacturers. There was Tucker, uh, there was Gary Davis who built this car, as well as a number of others, some more successful, some less. This car belongs to the Peterson Museum. They are now trying to get the funds to restore it. We're going to drive it. It's a little rickety. It needs, <laughs> it, it needs a few things, but uh, they only built 16, 17, 18 cars. Not sure exactly how many they built. Um, it's the classic story of underfunding and was there fraud and did people go to jail and well, we'll find out the whole story with Leslie Kendall. He is a curator of the uh, fabulous Peterson Museum. Come on, Leslie. How you doing? I'm doing fine, Jay. Thanks for How bringing these over. You might remember him. He brought me the uh, Steve McQueen Jaguar, the XKSS that was one of the great driving thrills of my life. I can't thank you enough. That was so much fun. Always uh, a pleasure. And I imagine this is going to be a th <laughs> thrill to drive as well. Tell us what we have. Tell us a story of the Davis Devon, am I saying that right? You're saying it perfectly. Um, first of all, it is gonna be the thrill, the kind of a counterpoint to the thrill you had with the Jaguar right. XKSS. Three wheels, again, you mentioned it perfectly. It was uh, the end of World War II where there's this incredible pent up demand for new cars. Manufacturers couldn't spool up production quickly enough to satisfy people. So a lot of entrepreneurs thought, this is my chance. If I'm gonna make a car, now is the time, fertile ground. And Gary Davis seized on the idea of a three-wheel vehicle because he had managed to um, buy what was called the California that was built from Frank Curtis. Okay. Frank Curtis, a very famous IndyCar driver who built that car for Joel Thorne, very, you know, a wealthy playboy. Anyway, uh, Davis got a hold of that car, said, gee, three wheels would be great, uh, sim simple to engineer. Uh, let's give it aerodynamic construction, let's build it out of aluminum, let's give it all these um, uh, wonderful things, disappearing headlights for aerodynamics, right. and uh, everybody will want one. Well, it's interesting because nowadays when people build three-wheel cars, it's primarily to get around the automotive standard. In California, for example, anything less than four wheels is considered a motorcycle. Right. So like a Morgan, you could get a motorcycle license. Uh, but that wasn't the case here. This was just... I don't know why anybody would think three wheels are more stable than four, but, uh, but it was actually pretty stable. There were rumors that these would tip over, but they really didn't, did they? Um, well, they, they could. Yeah. If you th really throw this thing well, into a sure. corner, it's not, it's not a very stable car. It's okay. really a revelation. Um, and it kind of um, teaches people that if you're going to build a three-wheel car, put the one wheel in the back, right. not in the front. Right, okay. Much more stable. So you're better off driving backwards is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Oh, because it's funny, because <laughs> I remember reading old road tests saying, oh, it was much more stable than people thought, but apparently that's not really true. Well, you know, Gary Davis was a promoter, yeah, and yeah. he did have a tendency to embellish yeah. certain uh, aspects of his uh, vehicles. You know, I always wonder about guys like Davis, like Tucker, because they both went to jail, and they both went to jail for fraud. Yeah. But I don't know if it's really fraud as we think of it. I mean, they were using the incoming money to support the car going out the door, which is technically not legal, but I get the idea that you just want to keep your business going, so using whatever funds you can. But were they really, was he really a crook, Davis? In, in, in my mind, you know, I've read an awful lot about this, and I don't think he was really out to get people. I just thought that he would bring the car to production by sheer force of will. Yeah. That he would get a lot of people behind it, the thing would gain ground, it would gain a momentum, people would, um, you know, eventually en legitimate engineers would come in and help him solve his right. problems. It just, it just never unfolded that way. Because it's rare that you find an engineer or a designer that's also a good businessman. Most of them are dreamers and artists and they have a great vision of mechanical superiority and this type of thing, but the whole business model just kind of goes out. 
you know, a lot of times they make a car better than it needs to be. So consequently, it's too expensive for the public. I remember when Lee Iacocca developed the Mustang. Right. Originally, it was supposed to have independent suspension. And Iacocca said, nobody cares about that crap. Just make it look good, put a four-speed in it, make it sexy. And the That's, car was a huge success. And it sold. It's so old. let's get back to this. So this has a removable hardtop. Removable hardtop, yep. And what engine does it have? <laughs> well, this car has an industrial engine. Uh, keep in mind, only about 17 or so were built. Um, the first four had Hercules engines, okay. and this is the last of those four to be factory equipped with a Hercules engine. The rest had Continental engines. Now, explain engines. Hercules engine. Are we talking like a Briggs and Stratton kind of deal? Is it like a golf cart or lawnmower well, engine, or well, was it automotive? In a way, similar, because it was a, uh, an industrial engine. Hercules okay. sold engines to put in um, carts for industrial use, for warehouse use, for um, forklifts and things like that. How many cylinders? Uh, it's a four-cylinder, oh, flathead. It's, four. okay. it's nothing, nothing exothic. Right. Okay. Four and what? Three-speed, four-speed. A uh, three-speed, three on the tree. Right. Okay. Plus reverse. And the interesting thing is, it seats four across the front. Theoretically, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it seats four. You see, what, wow. be, because of how it's laid out, if you have two wheels on the front, you can put the engine between the two wheels, and you can and you could get the wheelbase shortened. But if you right. have a three-wheeler, the wheel in the front, and the engine in the front, you have to put the engine behind the wheel, right. and that means you have to have a longer wheelbase, and that right. means you have to get back your passenger capacity by making it wider to seat four. I mean, it's... It's a pretty good sized car. It's not a small car. It, it's, it's not, it's not. It's probably the world's largest three-wheeled production car. Yeah. It's, it's really large as, as these things go. It kind of looks like one of those AMC, uh, the Pacer. You know, kind of, it's, it's a little bloated, a little yeah, bulbous, the yeah. first wide, small car. Right. But then again, it doesn't look that different from the Nash. I mean, that was the styling of the period. The Nash, the Hudson, that sort of giant, Audi TT kind of yeah, look, you know? Yeah. Well, you think people were looking to the sky for their inspiration, and they're looking yeah. at all these planes and how sleek they were, and how, you know, in, in ways unadorned they were. It was the, uh, the sheet metal that gave it all the visual interest, not the ornamentation. Now, does it use proprietary parts from other cars? That looks like a Plymouth steering wheel. I don't know that it's a Plymouth. I don't know that it isn't. But yeah, Gary Davis, he economized okay. where he could. About the only thing that he really built from scratch are the frame and the body, of course, the top. Okay, so he gets a bunch of engineers. What? How many workers? He? It, it's not. For, we're in Burbank, California. Van Nuys is the next town over. Mm -hmm. So he had an airplane hangar, mm -hmm. and he built them there. Mm -hmm. And he had a little pilot production line going, unfinished Davises on dollies that are moving down the road. Yeah. You know, the engines coming in and getting, putting them in. And, and didn't he drive one of these around the country trying to get investors and things? He sure did. Yeah. He drove around the country and he got a lot of interest. Keep in yeah. mind, post-war America, everybody was used to cars that looked like the Nash. There were four, four wheels, a proper you know, six or eight cylinder engine. Right. And here comes Davis with this incredible lozenge-like car. Yeah. Um, it just blew everybody into the weeds. Well, can we open the hood and see what it looks like on this? Yes, we can. Let's take a look. Open her up. All right. It looks like it opens from the front here. Yeah. Oh, okay, the there front. we go. Prop rod right here. Okay. There you go. Not much to it. No, but you know, it looks like a real car. I mean, uh, this all this looks like some pretty good engineering. I well, mean, exactly. What I, I would say this is very approachable. You can walk up to this car and look and see exactly how they engineered it and exactly how they attempted to solve the, the problems. I remember there was another three wheel car built here in California called the Dale. Yes. And that was a total scam. I mean, people went to prison. Uh, whereas this looks like. Somebody really put pen to paper and sat down and did some real engineering. I mean, this all looks robust mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, not kit car -y at all. No, no, this was engineered from scratch, and a, a lot of the engineering was derived from aircraft practice. Right. You know, this was, you know, similar to landing gear in an airplane, some people thought. And again, you mentioned Frank Curtis. Frank Curtis, of course, legendary race car builder, oh, yeah. Indianapolis. Absolutely. You bet. He built, I guess he did the original d design, the prototype for this chassis and everything? I, I wouldn't call it the prototype for this. He, he did a, an earlier car mm -hmm. that inspired Davis to do this. Right, okay, okay. But yeah, it all looks real. I mean, the engine doesn't look any different than any four-cylinder engine that might be in a Crosley or no. any other car, Hudson or anything of no, that it's, period. No, it's a flathead engine. It lots and lots of torque because it is an industrial engine, not a lot of horsepower, mm -hmm. about 47 horsepower, okay. but then the car only weighed about 2,500 or so pounds. Right, pretty, right. pretty lightweight and, and aerodynamic too. It didn't need a lot to push it down the road. And whose trans, uh, transmission did they use? Um, I believe it was a Borg Warner transmission, three-speed with a gear shift change, Okay. column okay. shift change. 
I mean, that's a robust looking radiator and it's, I mean, it, it, it all seems you know, real. It, you know, some of this, some of the um, aspects of the car are very artistically done, like the hinges for the, for the hood yeah, yeah. are actually pretty interesting. Uh, and then you look at the, at the radiator, and it's just a big old box that was welded together by somebody. And then you look at the suspension design, it was pretty ingenious. And you know, there was uh, a little bit of give and take in the artistry department. And there is a spring in here? Uh, the spring is just a ball. Uh, it's just a ball up in up in there. There's actually two springs, one on each side, and you can oh, kind I of see. see they compress see. when the yeah, when yeah. when the uh, suspension is um, activated. Yeah, getting a flat tire in the front looks like <laughs> you just go you, nose you down. You would not and... want to get a flat tire in any <laughs> on any yeah. of the wheels on this car. But one thing about the front, it doesn't have forks. It's only it's only um, attached on one side, so it's actually not not that difficult okay. to change the tire if you needed to. Because we have a three wheel car next door, and we have two outrigger almost shopping cart wheels, so if you get a flat and it goes down, you fall onto those wheels, yeah. which, because yeah. the nose would, you just, <laughs> just, just knife into the dirt, would yeah. you? Okay. Yeah, okay. Definitely, definitely. The interesting thing about this, one of the interesting things, the prototype had two hydraulic jacks, because back in the 40s, people got flat tires all the time. Right. Tire technology wasn't, wasn't what it is today. Sure. So that two hydraulic jacks would automatically lift the front up, and then you would change your tire, oh, be on cool. your way, theoretically, in very short order. And how do you open these headlights? Headlights are open by a mechanism from the inside that looks a lot like an emergency brake. Okay, let's see. Where the, where the headlights go? Hang on. Oh, I see. They the <laughs> headlights are stationary. It's the headlight lids that move. Oh, I see. They don't pop. Okay. All right. And they're not hydraulic like a lot of cars are today. It, it seems like in a hot day, maybe you'd open those to get more airflow to the radiator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or if you wanted to slow down more wind resistance. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure that would be it. Look at, <laughs> and you got the bumpers in the front. You got the little bumper rats. I mean, and it was really, uh, you know, kind of an ingenious design. It flew in the face of what people were doing in the 40s. They were tending to add yeah. um, uh, chromium plated flotsam on their cars. And it's, this. Completely the opposite. It seems like it would run hot because you wouldn't get enough air through the front. Pretty sure it did. I don't yeah. think Davis's were on the road enough for anybody yeah. to do any yeah. real evaluation. Okay. But okay. I mean, look where the radiator is, and the only intake is underneath the bumper. Yeah, and it's not even a scoop, and he, and you have this, you have this big fender right here, essentially blocking. Yeah. There's the everything. Radiator. There's everything in the way. You have the wheel. You have the fender. Because I know even in some motorcycles that front fender blocks the radiator. That's right. And yeah. they tend to run hot. So I can't imagine what it must be like in this. Yeah, it's completely enclosed and water cooled too. So it, it, you don't get the air passing over the engine to right, keep it cool. Right. Right. It has to go through the radiator. Gotcha. All right. Let's take a look at the inside here. Let's. Now that driver's door hinge needs some work, so we can't open that door. Right. right, that's how you know it's a real Davis because something's broken on it. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, if, 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 if everything worked perfectly, it, pr it probably wouldn't be a genuine car and we yeah. probably wouldn't be here talking about it because what makes it interesting is the quirkiness about the car and how some parts of it were really under-engineered. Yeah, now you guys are trying to raise money to restore this car, is that correct? Y yes, we are. We're doing crowdfunding, oh, uh, in Indiegogo. People can go on petersand.org and right. look it up and, 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 and help us. So if they contribute, they get their name in the... If they contribute, they get a variety of things, anything from a t-shirt to a ride in the car when it's done. Oh, all right, that's pretty good. So, there you go, there you go. Cool. Well, let's take a look at the inside. So we have to we have to look at it from this side over here. Yeah, we'll here. open it from this side. That big bench seat that seats four. <laughs> well, I liked, you know, Bristol had these. Mm -hmm. That was quite aerodynamic. The push button. Yeah, uh, little push button will pop right out. Yeah, yeah. Pop right out. Okay, and the door opens nice and wide. It opens wide. There's really commodious. Actually, there's a ton of room inside. It I don't is know commodious. If it's, I don't know if it's four people commodious, huh? but, well, but three comfortably, certainly. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's plenty of room. <laughs> it's hard not to laugh when you're sitting in it. And it's actually a car that makes you giggle. I mean, it is kind of a fun car. So what's the story? Why was this one preserved and all the others destroyed? What, who owned it? Where did it wind up? This car, we actually discovered this car in Denver, Colorado. And I am told that it was, um, for one part point in its life, it was on top of a post advertising a, a body shop. Oh. And if I wanted to attract attention, this is exactly the car I'd put on a, on a post. And this, is this the heater? That's a heater. It's a Southwind heater. That was right, right out of Los Angeles. You could get those in LA. It's got Stuart Warner gauges. Is that a gas heater? Or is it's it a gas a, heater. Oh, so you use gas? Gasoline. So you, <laughs> you get light worse, a fire. To, okay. Yeah, you get worse mileage in the winter than you do in the summer. Yeah, yeah. Well, very cool. And the top comes off, of course. Top comes off, yeah. A couple of latches. Two people can lift it right off. Right, all right. And then the... 
I imagine there's a full-size trunk. I mean, from the back, it's a full-size car. From the back, it's, it's nice and wide, and it's really pretty aerodynamic. Um, and it, it's got a full-size trunk. It's a good-sized trunk. You can fill it quite a bit back there. And I can see the, uh, some of the influence. Those look like cord tail lights there. Uh, the cord, the gas filler is here. Can we open the trunk? Yeah, absolutely. Got our car covers back here to keep it yeah. nice. Yeah. But plenty, plenty of room. You know, again, they only build, like I say, 15, 16, 17 of these, so everything is in perfect, not perfectly engineered. But and where are the 15 to say, is this number one, number 15? This is number four. Number four. This is number okay. four, the last one to be built with the Hercules engine. The okay. remaining uh, cars had Continental engines. Oh, okay. Yeah. Was that still a four or a six? Four. It's, uh, that would be a four also, flathead okay. four. They just switched for Very some reason. Nice. So you want to drive it with the top off it, eh? If you'd like to, that might, sure. be, might be fun. Sure, let's. Top down Davis. Let's take the top off and go for a ride. You know, this website is all about unique driving experiences. And it doesn't get more unique than this. You know, I love this period when people just there were no government regulations. Just build whatever you want. You use your imagination. If, if you could dream it, you could build it. Yeah. Like everybody did. Some were successful, some not. I mean, this actually rides pretty nice. I feel like I'm driving a Hudson Hornet with one wheel missing. <laughs> a little a little tippy in the corners. Yeah. I, I would not throw it into a corner. Yeah, yeah, a little tippy. <laughs> And this car's only got what, 11,000 miles? 11,000 miles, okay. yeah. So the, the engine's probably pretty straight. Barely broken in. It feels like it's running on three. Three wheels, three cylinders. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. You know, if you got in this car and you didn't know it had three wheels, you wouldn't know it initially. Maybe no, it, I know. It, it's, <laughs> at least they come to a corner. It's just fascinating that this is a three-wheeler not built to avoid regulations or save money on taxes or registration just because he liked a three-wheel car. Yeah, he built it just to be unique and to get attention. Yeah, yeah. Sold dealer franchises, took deposits on cars. He promised his employees that he would pay them double if they would work for free right. in the beginning. Never got around to doing that. Right, yeah, yeah. How long did he go to jail for? Uh, he was in jail for about 24 months. Oh, okay. He was wow. kind of a minimum security prison yeah, yeah. in Castaic. And does any of his family survive? Do they? Yeah, interesting. Um, he maintained his innocence steadfastly right to the end. Yeah. And who's to say that he really didn't, you know, I I intend for this to be a workable proposition? Yeah. I interviewed his daughter, and his daughter said that when the cops came to get him, he was hiding in her closet in her bedroom. Wow. And he and he said, Daddy, can I tell him where you are? And he said, Yeah, you know, jigs up. Yeah. Did it. You did it. A little more air in there. Look at that. Open those flaps. <laughs> it feel like it's running slightly retarded. That's not politically incorrect. That's a automotive term. <laughs> a little. A little. Yeah, I think that's what the problem is. <laughs> the nice thing about a three-wheel car is if there's a pothole, you can't miss it. If you don't hit it with the yeah, center yeah, wheel, yeah, I'm, you hit it with the two outer. I think it's very smart that you said that, too. Yeah. A lot of people that try to straddle potholes. No, you can't. You see, you go boom, and you go right down and yeah. right in the middle. I just like this era when a guy with a few bucks could actually build his own car and try to sell them. I mean, not many were successful, but it's kind of cool that you were actually able to do it. I mean, a lot of thought went into this car. It actually drives very nicely. When you consider that only 17 or so of them yeah. were ever built, you know, he got it right. It's airy. And back in those days, everything was optional. I remember when you bought a Falcon heater, yeah. it was $5. Outside mirror was $5, you know, whatever yeah, it was. You yeah, know. windshield visors were optional. Yeah, yeah, Side yeah. Visors. yeah. The perfect California car. I love the fact that it has a tack. It's only got 47 horsepower, and it's a flathead. How high can it rev? It's almost like it knows its limits. It's yeah. like, I'm only taking it to 40. I know it'll happen otherwise. I mean, it's got a boaty kind of ride to it, which is funny. I mean, this is gigantic. Uh, I know, I it's mean, amazing. This is just really expansive. Now, 
watch the turning radius this thing has. This thing is the master of the U-turn. <laughs> and but can you really put four people in this? Let's see. Let Kiko get in here and get another guy in here. Oh. Okay. There you go. I'm just gonna go pull around. <laughs> Hey guys. How's it going? How you doing? I've been this close to you before. <laughs> you know Leslie? It looks hilarious. <laughs> know me now. I knew we were going to work together. Know me but I never knew we were going to work together this close. Yeah, well, we'll name it after you. <laughs> and look! It really does seat four people comfortably. Fantastic! Let's take this thing cruising and see how she goes. Okay, we'll lose the dead weight here. <laughs> you know if this gas gauge works? He said, I asked him to fill it up. He said he filled it up. Okay. Either we're out of gas. The only thing I can think of is, let's, okay, this is a non-ventilated cap. I mean, I hear the pump. Yeah, it's not, you got a clog line or it's not getting fuel. Hang on, miss, hang on, hang on, ma'am. Come on out, you coming out? Come on. Come on back. Okay, go ahead. There you are. Hello. Thank you, sorry. Another three wheel. Okay, well, here's where we're at. We're by the side of the road. Uh, we seem to be out of gas. But then we can't get the hood open because the cable snapped. So we're not sure if we're out of gas. We can't open the hood to check to see. Um, I don't know if the gas gauge works or not. I mean, it starts and then it shuts off and it starts. So it feels like it's not getting gas. You might have a clogged filter, but there's no way to open the hood. Yeah. So, well, you see why we need money to restore this car. How do they, who that, should they call? That bears mentioning. We called, we called our collection manager who's gonna bring some gas along and he's gonna bring some tools and, okay. and see what we can get under the hood, first of all. But that's why we're restoring the car because all this little stuff goes wrong with it. And we want something reliable that we can show people what an authentic, but how can, authentic how, motoring experience is from 1948. How can people help out? What's the kick? What's the Kickstarter? Well, thing? to kick our program, they can go on petersen.org and look for Indiegogo um, uh, uh, connections to donate to this project. It's it's a Kickstarter project. Um, people get a, um, prizes for actually donating. That's right. To I'd us. imagine that we'll have enough money raised before nightfall so we get home. <laughs> but uh, at least well, enough to fill the tank. Yeah. So at least enough to fill the tank. So. But again, this is an all original car. Nothing's been done to it. That's why we're broken down by the side of the road. But uh, we'll keep you updated. So. That's what happens when the warranty's up. Yeah. Well, let's see. If, if we put gas in it runs, we'll continue driving it. If not, we'll end it right here. If we end it right here, that means we didn't get it running. So looks like we didn't get it running. Leslie, thank you very Hello, much. Jay. We got to call our buddies <laughs> to come get us with real cars. Cars with four wheels. See you next week. <laughs>
uh, I noticed a buddy of mine had an old Harley, one of these aftermarket gas caps, and he put it on, and he'd go 20 miles, and the car would, the bike would stop, and he couldn't figure out what it was. Then we finally deduced that there was no breather in the uh, in the cap, so it constantly creates a vacuum and it couldn't suck any fuel. And I think that's what happened here. They filled the tank up on this thing before they left. They put this cheap aftermarket. Where's that gas cap? Oh. Oh. Well, they got it. We took the gas cap off and we were able to drive back. So sometimes that's what it is. Sometimes it's something pretty simple. But that's kind of the fun of these old cars. And that's why we, <laughs> the Peterson needs to restore this one properly because this car is exactly as, it, as it's been for the last 50 or 60 years. So nobody's done anything to it. The fact that it runs at all is pretty much a testament to something. I don't know what it is, but it's certainly a lot of fun. So Leslie, thank you very much. Jay, what a pleasure. And uh, help out the guy. Send him five bucks. Getting enough people to send five bucks. We'll get this thing looking brand new. And when it's done, you'll bring it back. We'll drive it again. Can't wait. There you go. Can't wait. See you guys, see you guys next week. <laughs>